y'all. Welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. I had several people wanting me to talk about sumac tea and how we're going to make it. So I'm going to make a small batch of it. I'm not going to make a whole bunch. I just want to show how to make it. Uh, and then as we're making it, we'll talk about the medicinal uses of it. So I'm going to bring you over here and show you what I'm doing. I've laid a shirt on here and I'm going to get the berries off the stem. And then basically you're just going to cold soak it in water. So I've got my berries right here. And uh, I'm just going to roll them, and I put them on this shirt so I could catch them. It don't matter if you got some trash on it. I mean, you don't, because if you wash this, you're going to uh, destroy it. In other words, the berries, have you see that spider coming off there? He didn't He didn't like what I was going to do, did he? Because um, that red stuff will come off. You can't wash this. So what we'll do is we're going to soak this in water in a jar for a little while and then we'll strain it back through this shirt or through some kind of cloth you can use anything you can strain it through coffee filters however you prefer to do it into a glass and we're just basically getting a lot of the stick out of it but that red part is where the goodness and the flavor and the seasoning and all that is and you can leave it on the stick and put it in there I'm probably going to do that at some point with mine. I just thought I would get it, show you a way to get this off. And you can see the red is coming off on my fingers. And they are very tart. The seasoning you make from it, I've been doing some research, is a lot like lemon pepper. And I love lemon pepper. So we're going we're gonna to make some seasoning here pretty quick. I've got to figure out the best way to do it because you've got to get the the red off of that seasoning. And I'm I'm going to learn right here on the best way to separate this and and you see all this other part of it in there. Some said use a food processor like a food chopper. So basically, you see what I'm doing. I'm just sitting here rubbing this. And and if you sit here and pick each berry off one at a time, you're going to be a while. So somebody else out there, y'all may have a better idea of getting this off. I have not done a whole lot of this. I do a bunch of research on stuff, but a lot of this people just figure out by trial and error on the best ways to do things and i have not done that yet so the seasoning i don't i don't know yet how i'm gonna do it this tea is very simple once you soak it the red comes off and clouds the water up it has a lot of vitamin c and stuff like that in it, it helps rehydrate you oh put electrolytes and such as that back in your body. I don't technically know every ingredient that is in it, but that is what it's it's used for. It's like a backwoods Gatorade. You can add sugar to it. Okay, I have got all this done. Kind of roll them together. Um. You can pick the stems out. You can put the stems in there. You're going to strain it through something anyway, but do it like you see fit. Uh, I've licked this off my fingers. If you're curious of what it tastes like, I would describe this as exactly like sweet tarts. If you've ever eaten sweet tarts, that is exactly what that reminds me of. So... We're going to get these into this jar as, as best way as we can. And I don't know which, which way is the best. Probably a funnel of some description, but I didn't, I didn't have one just laying right here. I may wish I did. Let's 
I'm sure I'm doing something some way somebody don't like. I usually am. I got to where it don't really make me no never mind. I will say this, doing it on that shirt caught a whole bunch of that chaff. All right, so we've got that in there and then we can, I can clean that shirt off over here. Now I'm gonna use tap water. We have really good water here. So at this point, we're gonna go set this out in the sun. And you can see it is already starting to pinken up a little. This berry has a flesh on it and a hard seed in the middle. So you wanna get that off. So while we're making this, come here and we're gonna read. All right, let me just set this down and we'll go ahead. I've read this in another Sumac video, but I've we've got a bunch of new people, y'all, that may not know how to go back and find old videos. If you're looking for all my medicinal plant stuff, I'm trying to keep everything in playlist. So it'll be in the foraging playlist. All the medicinal plants, all the wild edibles, all of that type of stuff goes into the to the foraging playlist. Makes it easier for you to find if you're looking back at old stuff. But this is the the book I have been using a good bit. Uh, they're regional, so if you're in a different area of the United States, the Northeast or whatever, or out West, you're gonna find a different book. If you're in the Southeast, this is the book for you. Uh, I'm gonna go over where it says medicinal uses. There are several other, I'll put that posted up there as a bookmarker. Good color photos. Uh, on the front page, this is the color photo. It says Sumac. Gives you the, the medicinal name, which is Rus glabra arcifolium. Let me, hang on. Let me see if I can get that right. Arcopalinum. Arcopalinum and artifina. Parts used is the fruit and the root bark. Or fruit, bark, and root. Okay. All right, let's go over the medicinal uses here just for the people. We've done done this one time, but the flavor of the berries is sour, astringent, and this indicates it's used to cool, shrink, inflamed tissues. It can be a refreshingly cooling drink on a hot day in the same vein can be used to bring down an overly high fever. Like many berries, sumacs are high in vitamin C, and flavonoids, which are also good for the immune system and long-term health. This might be in part explain why the fruit was used for respiratory health. Um, the berries and the roots have been used to cool off inflammation and irritation in the urinary tract, while the astringency helps create better tissue tone. The tincture, or especially the tea, can help with symptoms of frequent urination. Sumac has also been used for a passive ulcers anywhere in the digestive tract. This is probably the combination of its use as an astringent, closing up wounds, and the flavonoids speeding up healing and acting as a tissue tonic. For the same reason, it can be used as a mouth rinse for aptus ulcers, gum disease, and other conditions where tissues in the mouth damaged and boggy with poor circulation. Herbal preparations, let's read this. The berries can be tinctured fresh, one half at 95% or dried at one fifth at 50%. Traditionally, they were also used in apple cider vinegar just to fill a jar with berries and fill to cover them. For a tasty drink, put one large or two small clusters in a gallon of water loosely cover and set in the sun for a few hours. You'll find out why one of the local names of sumac is lemonade berry. So that's what we're going to do, basically make a sun tea. But it's interesting to find out right here that you can use it to make 
apple cider vinegar because I have apples right here making apple cider vinegar where all I did was cut up my apples and put them in there and then I covered that with water. And then I put a coffee filter over the top. That keeps any flies, fruit flies, such as that out of there. So you see this behind me right here. Already see some pink settling in there. I mean, you see that water's turning pink. So we're going to set this out here in the sun for a few hours. We'll go back and get it after. So what I'm going to do is set it right here on this stump. Good sunlight. We're going to let it set here a couple hours. Turn that light over there off. I wanted to answer another question I get a lot of, uh, and I may read about this as well. People want to know how I make tea. So I use this coffee pot a lot when I'm out here working in my shop because it's easy. I don't, if I've got my wood stove burning, I've got a pot with a strainer in it that I use it a lot during the winter. During the summer, this is my go-to method. And right here, I have got goldenrod in there right now. So what I do is this screen ball very simple y'all and i keep teapots uh teacups out here this one probably needs washing out i really like my blue willow i keep them upside down as to keep anything from getting in them uh, but so this is goldenrod what I use is right here. Now you can see that I have, they make different sizes. So if you order these balls, either one will work. I just prefer the larger. Oh. So this, this tea ball has a latch on it. You open that latch, it hinges open. I put dried plant material in here. So I've got right here, I keep my golden rod in a jar. I will get me a jar as soon as I get my rabbit tobacco dried. I'll probably put another jar somewhere up here that is just rabbit tobacco. Last year, I wound up taking a blender and blending the two and mixed goldenrod with rabbit tobacco. Now, what I do is I just take my plants. I cut the tops out of them. And these I cut before they started blooming so that that would be green still. And I just hang them up. You, I showed you in the B-roll to begin in the intro. I've got several clumps of plants hanging up different things, hanging up in here dry. And I found if I just want to hang it and dry it in here with the air conditioners, it does a lot better. If I want to do it faster, I put it in that brooder coop under the heat lamps in that box, and it dries it overnight. Put your plant material in here, and I hang it over in that coffee pot. I put the water in the back just like I'm making coffee and turn it on. And y'all, in a few minutes, it infuses. It don't. I don't run the risk of it boiling if it's something that I don't want it to kill the medicinal properties. Goldenrod has a lot of good ish, good benefits, um, and this book has a lot of good information on the basic plants. Um, and gold uh, rabbit tobacco is not in a lot of these books. It's Nagphalium obtusifolium. I think I have one book over here that has the medicinal uses of it in there. Here is goldenrod. Um, medicinal uses of goldenrod is the leaves have a beneficial action on the lining of the respiratory and urinary tracts. As such, goldenrod has been used for allergies, minor colds, sinus infections, and the respiratory system and for chronic reoccurring infections of the urinary tract. This is not an antiseptic plant, rather it has a tonic action after the mucosa, the tissue that lines the rep respiratory, digestive, and urinary tracts. So it's not really killing bacteria or stopping immune reactions as much as it is strengthening the, pre strengthening the protective membranes in these organs. This is important because it's our first line of defense. This is why I drink it on a regular basis, okay? When people think about the immune system, often the things that come to mind are antibodies, white blood cells, lymph glands, and other players in the immune responses invaders, response to invaders. 
But our first and most effective lines of defense are our physical barriers, our skin, our mucosa, it's called. Mucosa because of the serrates, the layer of mucus that adds an additional layer of protection as well as forming a kind of flypaper to trap microorganisms and irritating particles so they can be eliminated from the body before they cause problems. By strengthening the integrity of these linings, goldenrod helps prevent allergic reactions, urinary tract infections, and other infections. The bugs can't harm us if they can't get through the gate. And because the plant is also astringent, aromatic, it can help dry up and remove the excess mucus that is symptomatic of an inflammatory reaction. It helps clear up the debris in the road so the traffic can get through again. It is also a diuretic, helping get rid of excess water and edema and stimulating the kidneys to excrete more fluid so it can also be helpful for the urinary tract by flushing the system. Goldenrod is ridiculous, ridiculously abundant in the fall and easy to harvest and is a solid preventative tonic medicine. Y'all, the next thing is when we had the Boston Tea Party, they threw all the tea overboard. Well, they didn't have no tea to drink because they destroyed it all. Goldenrod is what they went to. Oh, uh, and you see this golden flower. I have done several videos on goldenrod. You can look back in the playlist. Uh, let me find a book that has rabbit tobacco, and we'll talk a little about it while we're covering some of this okay, stuff. Okay, this is the only book that I have, Charles Mills Falls book, American Medicinal Plants. It's an old book, written old. Uh, you can still buy these new. They were still in print. Or was it last I read? Uh, rabbit tobacco is Nagfalium obtusifolium. Uh, and there is called Sweet Everlasting, Rabbit Tobacco, uh, Life Everlasting, Balsam, White Balsam, Indian Posy, Catfoot, Silver Leaf. It has several different names. Most commonly known as Rabbit Tobacco. Uh, and then... I know Mike Reed labels it as Sweet Everlasting a lot, too. So let's read. This is the only book that I find medicinal properties of it. And it says, The herb is masquerotory. It also been popular remedy on account of its astringent properties for ulceration of the mouth and fall season for quinsy. A hot decoction proves pictorial and somewhat anodyne, as well as pseudorific, which is like pseudofeb sinuses and such in the early stages of fevers a cold infusion has been much used in diarrhea dysentery and hemorrhage of the bowels and is somewhat vermifugal it is also recommended and i do not know this word leucorrhea leucorrhea the fresh juice is considered anti-venereal. Hot fermentations of the herb have been used like arnica for sprains, bruises, and to form a good vulnerary for painful tumors and healthy ulcers. For a small fee, the Indians who call this plant Sinjahu will allow themselves to be bitten by a rattlesnake and immediately cure themselves with this herb. I don't know about that. Anyway, it's in this book. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to try that for you. One of y'all want to get let a rattlesnake bite you and try to cure it with this herb, I'll video it. I'm not going to partake. <laughs> oh, Lord. But anyway, there's, there's what your identification looks like. Oh. This is some of what I have drying. You can see I have already stripped all the leaves off of that making tea. It turns very white, has these beautiful flowers, really. On the top, they have a yellowish hue to them. So, and I don't know if these still have seeds in them or not. I kind of picked this one before it bloomed out in this one too. Now, the others I let bloom out. 
Okay, y'all. I have got another mason jar here. This has been out there most all day. It is about four o'clock this afternoon and I've just got my t-shirt here. So what I'm gonna do is just start pouring that in there like that. Y'all, there's still a lot of meat on them berries. No taste left on it whatsoever. I had to see. Somebody would want to know. Oh. Uh, I'm going. I'm gonna dump these berries out right here, and as they dry that seed in there, I'm gonna take them and scatter them down there around my medicinal garden. Oh, uh, but here we go, y'all. It's not real strong. I was thinking that that was enough to have done, that's a whole cluster of berries. I would have figured it would have done a gallon, it said, but it's not that tart. Don't really have a whole lot of flavor like I expected. It's good. It's not like lemonade by any means. So I may, I may put that in the refrigerator. It's very much drinkable. I'm trying to drink it down where I can fit the rest of that in there so I can strain it all. And then I'm gonna go put it in the refrigerator and try it tomorrow cold. It's good, it's different. It ain't uh, sweet tea. I bet I'll add some sugar to it. What are you gonna bet? I'll wash all that out. Let's, let me put this in the refrigerator. Cool it. I may add some sugar to it, but y'all, it is very strange. Good tea now. So that is how you do that, in case anybody was wondering. So thank y'all for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.